Welcome everybody ah, to Eternal MMA Uncensored. This is a special edition. Uh, this is the Eternal MMA 31 recap. Uh, the reason why Eternal MMA Uncensored hasn't continued is because I headed off from Perth. Uh, I'm in South Australia now uh, doing breakfast radio. Uh, just, you know, no little shout out. Uh, I still suck, but it's just so I can continue my media career, but still being part of Eternal MMA. So I thought, I told Cam, lovely Cam O'Neill, who runs the show, said, if you let me do it, let, you, let me do it my way. Let me talk to, to my people uh, the way I want to talk to them, ask them questions that aren't like, how much do you love Eternal MMA and all that sort of shit? Uh, if I can talk to them freely, then I'd love to do a recap. So hopefully I'm going to try and do a recap for most shows. Uh, and a preview for most Eternal shows and just whatever happens in between. Who knows? Let's not have a structure. Let's just sort of see who we can talk to, who wants to be a part of it. And if you guys like listening, hey, we'll continue. If you don't, you think it sucks, uh, let me know uh, or let Cam know. But yes, uh, I'm the ring announcer. So I'm the annoying guy that yells in Perth, not the bald guy in Queensland. Although, Dave Ella, coming for your job. Uh, guys, on today's show, we're recapping Eternal MMA 31. That was at the WA Italian Club. With thanks to, of course, Engage Industries. Uh, you can check out all the amazing pictures from Hitman Picks. Uh, they're on the Eternal MMA Facebook page and EternalMMA.com. On uh, this podcast, a special edition, we're going to chat to uh, Ben Vickers, probably first, uh, the MMA clinic, Jack Della after him, Izzy Fitikefu, the Eternal middleweight champion, Jack Della course, the eternal uh, welterweight champion and brain welterweight champion. And then right at the end, uh, we're going to chat to Mark Simo Simpson, one of the most experienced refs in Western Australia and Australia. He was on the UFC card that was in Perth. He was refereeing the Jake Matthews fight. Uh, He's going to actually chat about that because there's a bit of controversy with that in uh, regards to eye gouging and whatnot. Uh, And also going to chat to Simo about uh, the Josh Della stoppage because uh, there's a bit of controversy with that. So I wanted to get his thoughts, give him the the platform. Okay, uh, guys, if you want to skip to certain parts of the interviews uh, down below in the descriptions, I'm going to put all the time codes so you don't have to listen to the whole thing. You can just skip to the guys you want. But uh, yeah, do have a listen. Let me know what you think. Uh, find me on Mitchell Tinley Facebook. Just be like, oi, you suck. Or, oi, that wasn't horrible. You know, whatever. Or uh, yeah, hit up Eternal MMA uh, Facebook, EternalMMA.com, Engage Industries. You know the drill. Uh, but yeah, his podcast was starting off with Ben Vickers, uh, head coach of the MMA clinic, co-owner of uh, Eternal MMA, and he was in the corner for the majority of the fight. So here's Benny Vickers. Uh, time code's below if you want to skip his, which you probably want to do. <laughs> anyway, here it is. Check it out. Who's calling me from Mount Gambia? Benjamin, how are you? I'm good, mate. How are you? Yeah, very, very, very good. Um, and to answer your question, your best friend. Oh, that's good. I didn't know I had one in Mount Gambia. No, you don't have one at all, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm creeping through. How do you, uh, how are you holding up? Yeah, good, mate. Good, 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 good. It was nice to have a day off yesterday for the first time in fucking three weeks. Jeez. So, how many, how many fights all up did you corner? Uh, I think I was seven of the ten on. Jeez. And uh, before all the pullouts, how many were you looking at? Probably about the same. Oh, okay. 17 fight fight card. So we would have had some gaps and stuff instead of just going fight to fight. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, I mean, we've talked about it before. How do you, how do you feel though? Like you had obviously some ups and downs. How did, how do you always feel after them? I always feel like this one was particularly difficult for me. Um, because of the magnitude of the last loss. Yeah. Like, I'm so proud of everybody, Josh included, obviously, that goes without saying. Um, you know, Darcy was superb, you know, that armbar. Oh, my God, that, yeah. I said that Darcy's one of the few people 
you know, in MMA, you don't see a lot of submissions from the guard these days. People are pretty onto it. Definitely not a lot of arm bars. Oh, especially Jesse Sayers. Have you seen the size of his arms? <laughs> yeah, I know. He can lift Darcy out of the arena. Uh, and Ryan Gray, uh, literally before the event started, he goes, I don't know. I can just feel it in Darcy tonight. He goes, I reckon he's going to catch him probably in an arm bar. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Darcy's that, like, that good off his back. He's catching a lot. So if you take him down, it's almost a... You know, as soon as he took, uh, as Jesse took him down, he was attacking, he was attacking, he was attacking. He's a very dangerous guard. Um, and even in MMA, like whilst taking punches to the face and stuff, he's just adapted it so well. Um, so, yeah, that was really impressive. And then who was next? Then he had Oshin, who, you know, he'd only, he'd only had a week of training he'd had a nightmare he'd been bitten by a spider and he'd been off for three weeks with an open wound in his oh, really? stomach and um, you know he might have had like 10 days to prepare for that fight and cut a bit of weight as well and uh, Ryan Witherington's no no slouch in the old stand up yeah and he trained they trained pretty hard as well like they, Steve Walton's very professional you know he trains his fighters and stuff um, so no stone was left unturned for them in their preparation so, Oshie just like, you know, crazy Irish man, just got after it. Yeah. Did I also, did I see you guys struggling to figure out if you were accidentally holding up like it as the Ivory Coast? And you were yeah. like... <laughs> yeah. We didn't know which way around the flag went. <laughs> well, there's a whole lot of irony in that. Obviously, I was in the army, in the British army, and spent a bit of time in Northern Ireland. Um, so, for me to have a try tricolo or tricolo or whatever, tricolo or whatever they want to call them. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's already ironic, let alone knowing which way around it's supposed to go. Oh, I just I just thought it was hilarious as he's like getting ready for the fight. You guys are like, oh, yeah, uh, like which way? Which way is this yeah, flag? Yeah, I still don't know if we got it right. <laughs> uh, I just feel like, and he's, I think his thing said like by way of Liverpool or something, and I just called it on the fly and I was like, Ireland. Like, I was staring at an Irish flag, and I was like, I'm going to say Ireland here. Yeah. I don't, I don't know, if, know if he's from Liverpool. Yeah, it's, there's some, hey, there's some skeptical, uh, skeptical things uh, on, those, on those lists. I yeah. had a big chat with George Garley, who was George Canoe, last one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's correct. <laughs> and he just laughed. Uh, also, you had, um, you had Pablo, who put on a uh, pretty dominating... Trying clinic to oh. start with. Jeez, he yeah, just... that's for me. That was a big win in more ways than one. In just the win itself, I mean, we kind of knew what would happen if the fight went on the floor. Yes, but um, the fact that the last time Pab stood in that cage, he got knocked unconscious. Yes, you know that makes it so much more special for me that he overcame that, overcame those nerves, those fears, like put that to the back of his mind and, and put on that performance, like landing head kicks and straight right hands and stuff. All good technical stuff. Um, and then, yeah, obviously, yeah. when it hits the mats, that's what he does. Pablo is one of the, the best guys to talk to after a fight. He breaks it down in in such a way where it's almost like spiritual. Well, like, he's one of the politest guys during a fight as well, apparently. He punched the other guy and said, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, are you serious? <laughs> yeah. He thought he might have clipped him in the back of the head, so he said, sorry. Oh, that is... That. <laughs> so that's just a measure of, of who he is. And, and then he's just an absolute wizard on the ground. He's one of them guys that are on the ground that he just, similar to George, who he fought, who fought after him as well. They're like, they're not the belt they are. They're just this like next level of jujitsu. There's like next level of grappling. I don't know what it is, but it's just, yeah. it's how they look at it, how they approach it. Um, oh, they love it. Yeah, they're very much. But it looks to me like both of them uh, have a, promising MMA career if they choose to pursue it. Oh, without a doubt. Both of their striking, uh, Pablo's obviously last event, uh, the one that's just been, his striking looked very good. And then George, uh, which ironically was the next fight, was throwing some insane power. Did you get to check out that one? I haven't, no. Oh, him against Sean Roberts, who I've trained a bit with Sean. Uh, he's a straight, like, Boxer, 100% boxer type thing. Just yeah. just kind of learning the ground game, which is always obviously going to be difficult when you, when you fight a guy like George. But what I was surprised with was how hard George was throwing and how literally athletic he is. The, the flying knees and he was throwing some pretty crazy shit. Yeah, he's very athletic. 
I mean, you just have to take one look at him with his top off to know that, though. Oh, he's the uh, the old, in most respectful way possible, that black athletic. He is just insane. Uh, and I reckon he's got a big future. Um, but seeing as you didn't see that fight, uh, Stacey Ward. Uh, is that Mate, Mitch- I was blown away by Stacey's fight. I mean, what, for one, uh, Christy was had amazing stand up and oh. a real ability to defend a takedown and use a tie clinch so well in in the anti grapple. Yeah, and then landing knees and I don't know what Stacey. I mean, J- Stacey Ward and Josh Della. I don't know what their heads are made of. <laughs> the fact that they maintain consciousness throughout those bouts. Oh, cool. some of the knees that I saw Stacey get hit with, like she when she was in the clinch, like a lot of them hit the shoulders, hit the arms. There was a couple that hit flush on the chin. Yeah, and it was as if it just hit her arm. Like I don't, yeah. I don't know. Oh, shit, I don't know what she's made of. I but you'd have to be pretty tough to put up with old Mitch Martin, wouldn't you? Yeah, that's true. How <laughs> a couple of them may. Uh... So, um, how long has she been training for? Uh, she's done a bit of boxing and then she's been with me a couple of years, but she was just in the boxing classes to start with and then sort of slowly transitioned across. Mm. Um, but yeah, that was, um, I was really proud of her. That was a, that was yeah. a good, good fight, like great fight back and forth. And to be fair, if she, if she could have got her on the ground, like we had that glimpse of it at the end of the second, um, I think it would have been all over yeah. for Christy, but she didn't. So yeah, Jackie, Jackie Driscoll, who was on the uh, the commentary, was was saying that the whole time. He was like, well, she's got to shoot, she's got to shoot. And yeah. then if she gets her there. It was the transitions and, and the speed off of the takedowns that let her down a bit, but that's something we could work on. Like She's yeah. relatively new to the game. So. Yeah, I mean, and Christy was uh, no slouch. She was an no absolute all, freak man. in there. Um, and just uh, going back to Stacey, uh, I was, what's that, fourth, fifth fight of the night, I was trying to save my voice, right? And when I turned to Christy, there was, I don't know, it wasn't an intensity because she was smiling, but she was like loving the moment. And I don't know, I just, I gave it more because I always can feel like the fighters, if they're kind of like uh, really getting into the moment, I get more into it, the crowd gets more into it, that sort of stuff. And Stacey had this like smiling assassin. Like she was like, I'm so excited. I'm about to go fight someone. Yeah, Stacey smiled the whole way through the fight. Oh, it was like, insane. It was just stupidly insane, and she scared the shit out of me. But the, <laughs> And then the fact that Christy uh, did what she did is super impressive. Um, yeah, she's a talented girl. She's got a, a, you know, she'll keep working on her jiu-jitsu and her ground, and, and, you know, with that already legit stand-up game, I think she could be a force to be reckoned with in the women's division. And uh, with with your uh, sort of obviously you got about seven fighters fighting and, and whatnot, and you've got your three corner men. Who who are you picking for for what fight? Like I saw Adam Lawrence was in the corner for someone. Like how do you go about who's in in uh, the I corner? I don't pick like me and Ryan corner. Yep. And then whoever they want as the other person. Uh, okay. Okay. So, cool. So that's how that that works. Um, I was just it's just interesting because I saw half your team out there. By the end of yeah, the night. Yeah, sometimes like guys are busy warming other guys up, and you know we just need a lot of people. So Adam and Brody went to school together, so that's why Adam came out with the uh, Brod. Yeah, and uh, that was uh, before I get into that one because I really want to talk about that fight. Uh, did you see DJ Boron? I didn't. Oh, he uh, took Kevin Un down. Who I mean, and Kev uh, trains a bit kick ass. Uh, seen him around. He's been working extremely hard. The old intimidating Cam Murky has taken him yeah. under his wing. Uh, so you know his game. But, uh, yeah, that was a mi- that, not a mismatch because it, 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 there's not that degree of uh, skill difference at this level. But, yeah, DJ Bowen is definitely more experienced. and, and Yeah, that was, a lot, that was another one that was a pullout. Yeah, and you had to kind of match it up in and, and Kev's game. So he, he was going to step Kev up. Really and, fight, yeah. and he knew – he Kev knew that uh, what he was facing coming up against DJ Bowen. But um, – yeah, it's just there's there's shit to work on, but he Kev showed some stuff from what DJ could have done, like from from the get go. Kev Kev showed some stuff, and DJ just took care of business, and he's always entertaining, and the crowd loves him. I don't know what's yeah, up. Of, it was a very partisan MMA twenty four seven crowd that night. They had a lot of people in. Yeah, but I think they like DJ more. Like like he is he's the guy. Like I was hearing it. There were some MMA twenty four seven guys, even Fuller. They didn't give him nearly as much as what they gave DJ. So he's got that. I don't know. Je ne sais quoi. He's uh, they're crazy. 
And they love it. Uh, now, <laughs> moving on to uh, Casey O'Neill, Rianne Ware. Now, that one, did you see that? No. Okay, now that yeah, one. I was not involved in that fight. I was staying out of the arena and I was in the change room with the guys. That so. one was uh, unfortunate. It was uh, basically ran just, I, I don't know if she stepped back. I tried to rewatch it. She said, it looks like she did like an ACL. I don't think she did. She would have been in more pain. But her knee was definitely gone. As soon as she stepped back, uh, it gave out. And uh, she hit the deck. And I don't, I'm not exactly familiar with the, that sort of rule set. I think you, it, it's play on, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Unless the referee calls the halt to the fight with an injury. Yeah, which you can't. I think Mark Simpson was the ref, and he obviously is the oh, most. Anything can happen. Yeah, he's... When he's a ref. <laughs> we'll not talk about that. I don't want to get into it. Let's not worry about refs. Let's, not, let's make a deal that we don't talk about anything the refs do because I'll get... Yeah, if this is going to go public, <laughs> I don't want to be put on record with what I'd say about some of the referees. Oh, I'd never do that to you, man. You know me. I'd never put you in that situation to yeah. make a drama. You know me. Yeah, exactly. I is I would not leave this in and not edit it out at all. Yeah. Uh, but either way, uh, yeah, she fell down. Uh, Casey uh, went in. And it went on longer because Rianne just absolutely gritted it and um, made it through yeah. for a little bit longer. But, yeah, I Casey, no doubt. Casey took care of business. It's a hard win. That's a hard win to have. You know, she she did earn it. She, she... Look, mate, I don't think it is. As a fighter, you I, I got in there. I was ready. Something I did caused her to do that. Yeah. Possibly. Exactly. And a win's a win. That's all you can do. And that's and that's the thing. Even if you make the step you make her step back and it happens on that step back, that step back is because of you. You know, so right. yeah, there's obviously crazy ways you'd you'd want to win, but uh that win is is, is well earned. Uh moving on to Brody and Daniel Fuller, Brody Pano. Uh yeah, you gotta well, have loved that. Yeah, Brody's um Brody's different gear, like he's he loves it. He doesn't get stressed. He doesn't get nervous. Uh, he just takes everything in his stride. And for someone who's only been training in three years, the skill level that he possesses is phenomenal. Oh, he was throwing wheel kicks and side kicks and side kicks to the face. It's uh, just the way he puts his punches together in combination. Oh, and um, despite the uh, public opinion, Daniel Fuller can fight. Like, yeah, where, absolutely. Whether you hate I him or not. I don't know. I like Daniel Fuller. I, he is, he has been a great guy, uh, at least uh, to me. So my personal opinion of him, I, I like him. But I know there's, you know, he talks a lot of shit, and he he likes that. He's 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 that game. He's that type of fighter. He's that type of promoter. Um, the big bin on your way through on your on your left hand side. Yep, yep, right there. Chuck it there. But uh, with Brody, what's the yeah? What's the were you, were you happy with with his performance? Yeah, I was super happy with his performance. Do you think he's having, this is, now I love this stuff, but uh, hearing some comments, do you think he was showboating a bit too much? Or get, or do you no, think he was just getting loose? Cool. That was just his game? Not at all. Okay. Not slightest. Because it's not like he's showboating and not doing anything. He still dominated every single round. Um, outstruck for a two or three to one. Yeah. At least. He just put his hands up, you know. That's what Fuller's like. He he, um, he brings that out, yeah, because he's that kind of competitor. So yeah, I I called that for Friday night before the card even started, uh, and it was just entertaining as hell. Uh, moving on to Jack Della versus Luke Howard. Now uh, I don't even need to ask if you were impressed with that one. <laughs> I was impressed. You know what? I was super like in between rounds. I'd, like the first round, Jack took off. Yeah, like he was just goofing around. He, yeah, he lost he, that round. Like he, it's. Well, I don't think he lost the round. Oh, come on, Benny! Come on, Benny! But you know, he was just messing about. Yeah, he, he like he wasn't defending takedowns. He was laughing, smiling, joking, and and I said to him in the team round, I said, right, that's fine. You, you know, he was very accurate. He landed on the count. Now he didn't really waste anything. And uh, he he was clearly like, you know, um, t- enjoying himself in there. And I said, look, <laughs> Luke Howard is not an opponent to be messed around with. Okay, you've had your fun. Let's get this. Let's get into the next gear and let's finish it. And uh, finish it. He did. 
It was uh, eight seconds later. Luke was asleep. That was a pretty scary knockout. I'm not going to lie. Like it's different. I've had an opportunity to watch the sequence back, and the combination punching. Oh, just textbook. Oh, it was set up like eight, nine punches before it, that the final punch landed. That whole combo was insane. We had about 20 to 30 guys that were in the seating row get up, run over to the screen after that knockout to watch it all happen again. And uh, it was super impressive. Uh, and, I mean, Jack, where do, you, where do you see Jack going? I mean, you're a bit, obviously... You're going to be biased. You're that coach. You're, you're his mentor. It is what it is. But where do, you, where do you see his ceiling? What's happening? Yeah, I don't know. Like, it's just a case of, at the moment, we just got to take it um, one fight at a time. The old cliche. Yeah. And, um, yeah, we'll, we'll uh, make a plan as to what we want to do next. And just keep winning. <laughs> keep winning in devastated fashion. Oh, he's you're going to get wherever you finishing. want to get. Finishing guys just any which way he likes, which is uh, just the best way to do it. You know, the sub on uh, Cage Warriors and then the the finish with the strikes at uh, or strike at uh, at Eternal, and he's he's really putting on a showcase. Regardless of his record, I think he's he's going to get that call up. And whether you and him sit down and and take the smart approach or take the quick approach, either way, I think he's going to get to that that level. Um, yeah, I hope so. Oh, without a doubt, and, uh, and then obviously mo- moving, uh, moving. Sorry, to the uh, nail bit of it. You know, as as Josh just recently posted, yeah, sometimes so. you're the hammer, sometimes you're the nail. Jack was the hammer. Josh happened to be the nail. Josh Delavers is he for Tefuku, mate? What's Fitikefu? Fitikefu. Yeah. I stuffed that up for the first time, but got it right on the night. That's all that matters. Uh, what's your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I'll. I was amazed at, by Izzy, actually, because having watched the last two fights, he fought Darcy Vendy on Reign, or, well, sorry, on Eternal to win the title. Uh, and then another fight on Eternal, he fought another guy. And when he fought, I can't remember the guy's name, but when he fought that guy, he took him down as well. But he just sat in his guard and didn't really do much yeah. for the whole fight. And it was just like uh, the level of improvement from that day, that fight to this fight, it just took me by surprise. I wasn't expecting it. Obviously, because of the level we're at, we can only go on what we've seen. And from what I'd seen, I didn't see that coming. Like maybe, you know, and I had no other, nothing else to go on. So, yeah, I just didn't, I didn't see it going like that. And that's that's life, you know. Yeah. Is there is there was there any sort of standout? thing that you think went wrong for Josh in that situation or was it just one of those nights? Yeah, I think there's a few things that we could work on if, if we were to get in a situation like that. That's a guy that, you know, he wasn't looking to pass the guard, he wasn't looking to improve the position, he was just looking to rain down elbows from the mount, which, from the guard, sorry, which makes it very difficult for you then to counter that with submissions and yeah. you need to, you know, if you open your guard, he's still not going to pass, he's happy where he is. Yeah. So we need to, to look at other ways of sort of improving the position there. The submission attempts weren't working. The hand ties weren't working, et cetera, et cetera. How was but his... yeah, what are you going to do? It's just one of them. And once you've taken 27 million concu- pe- elbows that would have killed a oh fucking normal God, human, God, yes. then trying to follow instructions is going to become even more difficult. So Did he end up, uh, how many stitches did he end up getting? Oh, mate, it took an hour to to finish stitching his face. It's insane. Uh, especially, I think I've seen the majority of, at least the most of Josh's fights because of just the way Eternals worked out. And he either finishes quickly and dominating or he takes, he just gets cut up. Like, uh, even against the, uh, I forgot. Dan Curry. Dan Curry, that's it. Taking just cuts, just getting cut and cut and cut. Uh, is that a problem with him going forward? Like, no, you, he is... just gets in positions where he can be elbowed. It's nothing to do with him getting cut. He's just getting stuck in positions where people can rain down elbows on you. Doesn't matter if you've got leather skin, it's going to cut eventually. Yeah. But, uh, uh, yeah, so where, where, for, where to from here with, with Josh? I mean, that's and... up to Josh. He needs to go back and reevaluate and have a rest. You know, he's got a young kid. He needs to spend some time with his family you know he's been training pretty hard he's been pretty full on um but yeah it's up to him 
Like he needs to evaluate if this is what he wants to do, which I don't see why it wouldn't be. But you know, is there like, questions like, about that, or is that? I don't know. There's definitely questions from his family. Um, you know, if it, have your mum and your your girlfriend, soon to be wife, sorry, fiance, soon to be wife in the crowd, uh, witnessing that, they're obviously not going to be too happy. But at the end of the day, it's his life, and if he wants to continue, he'll continue. Uh, is there, not that he ever would, is there ability to drop down to 77? I think there is, yeah. Because he's, he's like long, him. he's tall, he's long, but he does look like he, he could drop that weight. He didn't cut weight to make 84 this time. Well, he's such a gangster, he'll, he won't, I feel like he would just fight at whatever weight he wakes up at. Like, right, and he's just the tough, like, he, he was not out of that fight, like, he was game to continue. Okay, so, all right, what's the, what's the issue with that stoppage? I've never seen a, a stoppage like that before. Because it wasn't? Not, to because s- in the first round, if he would have stopped it when he was taking heaps of elbows, I would have got it, but it was one elbow, and then the referee decided that was enough. Like so he elbowed him. He didn't reset and then elbow him again. It was just like one isolated elbow. What was it explained to him. you as ref to you? Was it was it wasn't defending I himself? Had okay, so he's still conscious, still absolutely, yeah, yep. And can can a ref go? Those cuts are too big, or those cuts are too big? Is that solely out there? Wasn't the why he did it though. Okay, I thought he'd had enough. Or he'd not, not I thought, he'd had enough. Well, he's in control of that. He can tap. Now, now Josh, and that's uh, to my sort of second point, Josh didn't seem to protest it, though, too much. Was that just because of, you know, well, the exhaustion? What or... going to do? Yeah, he's just been elbow. He's covered in blood. He's not going to jump up and start. Um... He, I said to him when he sat down with my corner half, I said, you, could you have continued then? And he said, yes. Mm. Now, he's a fighter, and do I think the result would have been any different had the fight not got stopped then? Po- probably not. Yeah. But I think in a, in a title fight with experienced fighters, they've got to be given the um, opportunity to for the fight to finish their way. See, and that's a... Uh, I mean, what's that drop, Josh? Four and three? Is that... Four and two. Four and two. So that's, that's, still, not, that's still not bad. So a four and three is... You know, you're kind of fighting that uphill battle. Four and two is not, you know. No, he's okay. Yeah. He's fine. Like, yeah. It's just just a speed bump. Like, if he chooses to continue his career, he's absolutely fine. All righty. Well, uh, any any final thoughts? i got to go talk to the champ, uh, the welterweight champ. Uh, in a, in a no, team. no. No, that's me, mate. All good. You're good. Any Anything people need to know for coming up events? No, no, no. No. We've got Adelaide, April 7th. That's the next one. Yep, just if you sign up for a fight, try and make it to the fight. Yeah, yeah, that'd be good, yeah. <laughs> commit to doing a fight, then turn up. Yep. Uh, well, that's how we roll. I mean, I turn up to the fights every time, mate, every time. You do. You just wear a suit and shout a lot. That's uh, that's my role. All right, Benny boy, uh, I'll let you go yell at some women doing fitness classes, and uh, I'll speak <laughs> to you later. All right, cheers, mate. All right, take it easy, boat. Hello. Hey, Champ Champ, it's Mitch. Hey, brother, how are you? Good, how you feeling? Yeah, good. Good, just finished work? Yeah, head at home. Awesome, how's the body feeling? Yeah, good, not actually pretty fine, hey. Just got, I had like a bit of an ankle injury going in, which is sort of, like I've inflamed it a bit, but apart from that, all good. Happy days. That's good. Now, uh, I want to cut, obviously, straight to the chase. I just, I just chatted to old Benny Vickers and ran down the yeah. card, but I'll skip scri- straight to your fight. Um, yeah. He reckons you took the first round off. <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I might have even uh, scored that one against you. What was going on yeah. in round one? I don't know. I just was really trying to, like, stay, like, the whole fight, just relax. Even the start, <laughs> I was just like, fuck it, I'm just going to take it hell easy and just, like, really feel him out. So I think that I just obviously felt him out a little bit too much. Because he even and took you the, down. I know. He got me down twice, I so think. I know, mate. That's not I looking good for the amateur record. <laughs> the amateur uh, wrestling. I know. Oh. Shit. But uh, then you just uh, turned it on. The old Benny Vickers yeah. gave you the Space Jam water. 
And, yeah, he uh, gave me the all clear to go. Yeah, he said, that's right. The bookies <laughs> the bookies have said round two. Let's do it. <laughs> uh, what, was your, what was your thoughts, man? Like, throwing the, throwing the combos, your striking's looking as slick as anything. What was going through your mind? I was just fucking, I don't know. I was just like, I, rem- I remember I was like slowly pushing him up against the fence and I was just thinking like, if I do, like going in the second round, was if I do get him to the fence, just fucking tee off. So I felt like I was able to see shit and like land what I was throwing. So I just thought if he backs up, if he hits the fence, I'm just going to tee off and hopefully crack him. Uh, and which you did. Uh, what's your thoughts yeah. when you when you basically make a grown man go limp? Like what what goes yeah. through what goes through your body? What goes through your mind? It was good. It felt good. It felt good for a bit, and then I sort of was like, oh, poor guy. <laughs> I was, it was bad because I was really close to landing one more shot. Just oh, really? Actual instinct. Not, I didn't want to land the shot, but I was very close. I'm so like the ref did a real good job. Yeah, Diogo uh, actually got praised uh, quite heavily yeah, for that for it, yeah, for I being so athletic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it was good. It was. I was stoked with it. And is that your uh, is that your first? That's not your first starching sort of knockout, but it is your first one with fists, isn't it? First like yeah, KO. I flat. landed an elbow in my. Yeah, the old back yeah, elbow. I, the, yeah, but it wasn't as he was out of it. But I, I think Luke, he was he was out of it for a while, unfortunately. Yeah, what goes? I mean, like you're such a nice dude and you're such a chill dude, <laughs> but yet you were almost. Uh, you were almost like not talking shit, but you were with your eyes. Like you kind of were like, all right, yeah, you're like smiling, laughing, you're throwing heat. And yeah. you're almost the opposite to your brother in a way. Like Josh almost yeah. talks shit outside of a cage and then he's quite chilled inside. And right, you're kind yeah. of the opposite. What's, <laughs> what's the go, man? I don't know. You just can't I get a word in nor- with him? I don't, I don't normally, like, I don't know. I just, this fight I had wanted to, no, most of my fights are, like, blurs, completely, like, don't really remember them. But this one I really wanted to, like, remember the whole thing. So I was, like, really, like, chilled out. Ben probably reckons a bit too chilled out in that first round, but I don't know. Yeah, you've got those, uh, it's, I mean, how how many times have you been pro? What's that? Five, six fights, seven fights? At pro now, yeah. so yeah. maybe you're getting just super chill with the old five minute round, and you, yeah, just I mean, start doing the ten minute rounds. I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> now, obviously, you when you finished when you finished him, uh, half that crowd, if not all of that crowd, is there for you. Uh, yeah. Even if they're not MMA clinic, they're they're there for you. They want to see you beat yeah. the guy from Adelaide and Bali, but. Yeah. And you look up to your family, which weirdly buys all the VIP tickets. Uh, I don't yeah. know what sort of money you guys are sitting on, but uh, it's impressive. <laughs> but uh, yeah, what what goes through your mind there when you when you get the finish? You know, you look up at your family. What's what's happening there? Yeah, it was good. It was a weird one. I haven't actually um fought in front of like that many people in a while. Like last most, I think five six fights have been. I've had two friends there. Yeah, it's mom. it's weird. So it's a lot different. You've been. Always away. That's the first yeah. one I've called for you, ring announced for yeah. you. And Josh, I've basically done most of his career. <laughs> like, yeah, that's true. So I've always well, found that a bit weird. Yeah, it was cool though. I loved it. Oh, I my, thought it, I thought I wouldn't like it in front of my friends. Like I've always thought, fuck, I'm so glad I go away. But I actually really enjoyed it in front of the family and stuff. Yeah, you really you really thrive. Did you find it hard leading up to the fight, like day of, you know, two days out with all your friends and family? Because at least you're away normally. Yeah, it was different, like, with all, having to organise, like, some tickets and shit. Uh. <laughs> I, did, I was like, I didn't even realise this is a problem, but it's fucking annoying. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all good. Oh, mate, you won't have to worry about uh, tickets in your next fight. People will be flocking. Yeah. Well, you got four Hopefully. finishes in a row? Jeez. Five yeah. now, five now. Five, How dare five. I? But, yeah. uh, you've never, Good. geez, you've never had to go to the judges. That's uh, I know, luckily, uh, a long time. Now, obviously, <laughs> the highest of highs. Uh, I was an absolute. Uh, it was an absolute blast to uh, call you in. That was my favorite. Literally, you yeah. and ring announcing you was my favorite of the entire event. I don't know. Why, just, why is that? I don't know, why? man. Everyone just goes ballistic. You staring a hole through me. 
to the uh, – because it's, it's generally how it works. So the, the fighters are looking through me at the guy, and I, f- I can fucking feel the yeah. intensity. And I was thinking, I was like, fuck, Mitch, I'm not trying to ignore you, man. Fuck, fuck this cunt. Nah, it was, it was fucking dope because there was times where you were just like – I was like, man, he's feeling it. He's feeling it. He knows. Yeah. <laughs> and then he gave me a little, little salute after, and I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah we're cool. But – yeah, we are. So you had your fight finish, and then you obviously yeah. had to run back. Yeah. And Josh's came. Now, yeah, I watched your fight, your face through that entire fight, and it was scrunched up the whole time. Yeah, I what, didn't like that. Age. What was going through your mind through that through that whole ordeal? Yeah, it was just it was tough. Eh? It was tough to watch for sure, and because I was with Dad, that me Dad. Yeah, well, is that a, was that a new thing? Dad yeah, being in the corner? Dad's never been in the corner. Oh, fuck. <laughs> fuck probably the wrong night, but... <laughs> but it was... Yeah, it was fucking tough. Mm. But... It's, how, do you, how do you feel? Because, man, you can't take away... You put on a, a pretty amazing performance, so you've got to be happy. But then at yeah. the same time, you know... Definitely, no, yeah, I felt like the whole night was about... It was Brody. Brody was uh, our mind... Like, Best mate, he fought before me. Yeah. So like Brody, Josh, me. I just felt like that was our like that was the mission to like get all three. So it was fucking sixty six percent happy, basically. Yeah. How I'd put it. I was, obviously I've been happier. Definitely not as happy as I would be if it was just me fighting and I won. I'm fucking pretty devastated to tell the truth. Do you like fighting on the same card as your brother? Like, did you uh, like yeah, it? Yeah. Fuck yeah. Oh. For sure. I just don't know how that would have. I don't know how it would have been if that had have happened. If he was fighting first, yeah, that's actually what I was. I was going to ask you. That might have been a, a completely different sort yeah, of. Yeah, I fuck. I've no idea how that would have gone down, but I don't know. Yeah, that's that's some. Uh, it was fucking tough. But how's he? How's he holding up? The day is, he's by like spirits wise, he's happy. He's fine. It's more external, like it's just fucking cut, and even his head. Like I don't even think he had much of like a headache or anything. It's just literally like he's battered and bruised. Now, um, what do you think of the stoppage? Uh, um, it's a tough one. I uh, like if it was someone that if I was just a fan of them, I would have been like, "What the fuck? Why did he stop that?" <laughs> But for the fuck, he was in guard, but at the same time, that was fucking pretty tough to watch. Yeah, it's... I know, uh, and I know how Josh is, he's a fucking, he's a motherfucker. He would have stayed in there until the end. Like, even if it was a five-round fight, he would have, that would have happened if he didn't get up. He would have just sat there the whole fight. Oh, shit, yeah, but... You know what I mean? Like, he was never going to tap, so I don't know. Like, he's, but he's 24, like he's he's got he's got a young young family as well. Yeah. Like, and it's when you're fighting in Perth, man. You, I mean, I know the refs aren't; they're not thinking about that sort of stuff. But that that's in yeah. there. When you're seeing a guy, you that, know, yeah. twenty four. Get yeah, and look, he could have come back and won that. You know, anything's possible. For sure, yeah. But it was pretty fucking one sided. It was a takedown. It was elbows, yeah. and it was fucking ten minutes. Yeah. So and look, he's he's four and one. He's four and two now. You know, it's not it's not the end of the world. You get that one out, you get him back in again. Yeah. Live yeah. to fight another day. Uh exactly. So it's it's tough, it is tough, but that's why it's I tough. yeah, really wanted to get your your thoughts on it because you seemed quite not as I've seen you more animated, obviously trying to get involved with the fights, uh, by pulling yeah, ankles. Yeah. Uh but I, tried. I was fucking getting my fingers in there. <laughs> but this one you were you were quite Kind of reserved. The ring, I reckon. Fuck that cage off. Was it was uh, it because you just fought, or was it did the style of fight? Because you were actually quite more reserved than you normally are in the corner. Yeah, it must, it must have been. It must have been just fucking. Don't know. Maybe to, even because Dad was there. Yeah, that's maybe fucking had the leash on me. So I don't know. Man, that's a it's a it's a clusterfuck of emotions man like I'm not even related to you guys and both of those fights took it out emotionally for me yeah. I was like ah oh, fuck and even reading the the like Izzy is the fucking champ I can't be like oh Izzy's the champ like yeah like I have to fucking give it yeah. give it my own and it's like breaks yeah. my heart yeah. but uh oh, it's tough because 
tough night. Uh, end of the day, it was probably more tough than not. Yeah, it's it just sucks because you know you don't want to take away from 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 what you did, yeah. and you should be obviously super fucking happy. And yeah, and uh, sometimes you're the hammer, and sometimes you're the nail. Exactly, and that at the end of the day, that's the sport, eh? That's and I've seen be on that side all the time. I've seen Josh be the fucking hammer uh, yeah, <laughs> more exactly, than enough. Yeah, um, exactly. All right, well to round it out, Jackie, where do you where do you see, man? What what's what's in your future? What's happening? I don't know. I'm just gonna. I think I like I've gone like. Pretty much almost like camp back to back. Yeah. So I don't, I'm just going to see what happens. But I'm pretty keen just to take it easy, just for at least a couple of months and actually try and get better. Yeah, not like just really straight focus into... focus on, yeah, just actually getting, like getting new skills and actually getting better rather than just getting fitter and like getting ready to scrap sort of thing. Yep. But that's my, I don't know, it's fucking early, so I'll just see. Nah, mate. See what's up. Cage Warriors is going to call you tomorrow. So. I fucking hope so. <laughs> That'd be sick. All righty, mate. Um, all right, before I let you go, is there any little sponsors, any little shout-outs you need to get out? No, not really. Shout-out to the fam, the MMA clinic. Best team in Perth, that's for sure. I reckon almost best team in Australia. Why? Who's, One who's, who's above? We'll be back. Whooping ass. Who's above in Australia? Why would you pull short of Australia? Yeah, fuck them. No. <laughs> <laughs> No one, actually. <laughs> uh, all righty, man. Well, I'll let you go. Uh, it's always yeah, great speaking you. to you. And uh, it was f- fucking phenomenal. So take it easy, yeah, bro. How's, your, how's the new um, city going? Oh, bro. Living a fucking dream. Okay. Good. Yeah. Just using my whole weekend to fucking fly back. I made no money. Like I got paid to fly over and I'd fucking do it all over again. Fuck yeah. Like I fucking love that shit. Yeah. To have you guys to call to call it for you guys, fuck legitimately, yeah. greatest thing I've ever done. Yeah, fuck no. How's the new home? Like, how are you enjoying the new gig? Yeah, it's 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 tough because I'm away from from everyone yeah. and all that sort of shit. But it is, you know, it's what I got to do. It's that grind. Yeah, it's it's that exactly. it's that flight to England. You know, it's that flight to. You, fuck yeah. You've got to do it. The people only see the the cage warriors, or people only see the the radio station. They don't see like you have to live this certain life now. Yeah. And yeah. uh all I'm trying to do is avoid a fucking real job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, fuck that. Oh, good shit. All right, man, I gotta run and uh, uh I'll let you go yeah. and we'll chat soon. Uh see you dude. Peace bro. Bye. Hello. Uh hello, Izzy. How you going, mate? How you doing? It's Mitch. How you going, Mitch? Yeah, good, good. Uh, thanks for taking the call, man. Uh, that's all right. Um, first of all, mate, uh, absolutely uh, super dominant uh, performance on the weekend. Uh, how how you feeling? How's the body? Oh, uh, it's all right. A little bit sore, but not, nothing serious. Yeah, it's... um. Now, have you always sort of prided yourself on your, your wrestling, your ability to, to hold guys down in that in that position? No, oh, not really. I just, I just found them, found them a little bit easy to hold them down just there. Oh, hey, that's. Uh, is it been something you've been working on in in your training camp, or just uh, just took the opportunity when it was there? Oh, it's a big part in our training camp of wrestling, wrestling and boxing. But yeah, training with good guys. So do you spend much? Do you spend much time training with Whitaker? Yeah, we're together. We're pretty much a team. We, just, we train together. Pretty much every day. Uh, how do you find he he helps you? He just he helps he helps us as, um helps us uh, build our, he helps us build our confidence and um not only that he's a good person to be around. Do you yeah. uh do you get to help him much with with his camps or is uh... yeah we're pretty much his main um, training partners for um for when it comes to grappling and sparring. Most yeah, my stuff. Who are the uh, who are the other couple of guys that that you you? I mean, you tried to give him a bit of a shout out in in the uh, in the cage, but I thought I'd give you a, another opportunity now to give a couple of shout outs to your training partners to help oh, you get yeah. ready. Um, David Francis, he was supposed to fight on the card that we are uh, the um in Perth, but he got injured. And um, Jacob Malkoon. Was he the one that? Card. Sorry, was he the one that dislocated his shoulder? Uh, David Francis, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Francis was. Because, uh, yeah, I heard uh, you, you guys and Whitaker train quite hard. 
Yeah, he got um, he just got unlucky, he's just, like just got unlucky with injuries in the camp. So, but Jacob Malkoon as well, he's um, he's a those two are guys to watch out for. Really good guys. And um, how do you find fighting over in Perth? Do you like the travel, or would you rather fight in New South Wales? Or yeah, just I don't mind traveling. I just hate being away from my family. I'm a big family man. Yeah, you are without a doubt. I mean, that's that's the first thing you said, and and uh, like you, you're a man of many wor- uh, few words. But like when when I gave you the microphone, man, the first thing you did is is thank your family and all of your social media. It's all about your family. Uh, is that is that kind of your motivation to fight? Yeah, no, yeah, it is my motivation, but like. For myself, if you take a man away from his family, he's angry. he becomes a he becomes a determined, angry man. When so, would you say that almost helps you being away from yeah. the family? Like that's how my mindset sort of like take it. I take it. Like, I take it in a bad way. Like not, not a like bad, like a good way. Like yeah, I get you. I feel like they're taking me away from my family and want to make ah, pay for me. That's a that's a that's a very unique way of looking at. It. I, I really I really like it. Um, so is when it comes to sort of uh preparing for a guy like Josh, did you did you know much about Josh Deller or I just knew he was a tough bloke. I was I was expecting um a full on war with him. I was I thought I was expecting, but um I, I just knew that he, he was in a fight to fight and I knew he was gonna bring it, but it, it turned out other ways. What did you what did you think about the stoppage? I thought he was gonna stop it in the first round because I was, but there was this blood everywhere, and I, was yeah. like, I looked over into the corner. I saw the doctor come in, and I was like, "If the doctor doesn't stop with him, probably the best will stop it in the second round." Yeah, there were some uh, some some brutal elbows. Was that? I mean, was that the game plan? As I said, as I was asking you before, is that was that the game plan, or did you just kind of that happened during the fight, and you thought you just sort of stick with it? I just went off the moment. That wasn't even the game plan. The game plan was to keep it standing. Oh. Keep his standing and um, keep him, keep his back on the on the cage, and um, just to land my right hand. The, the coaches were drilling it into me. Just make sure you land that right hand. Just make sure he knows you're there. Yeah, because you've got you're no slouch in the uh, in the boxing department. So to see that see that wrestling game uh, really put on show. I mean, who's your, who's your wrestling coach in in New South Wales? Um, Fabrizio Ite. I mean, he's got to be happy. <laughs> Yeah, he's 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 um yeah, he puts um uh, he puts his work on wrestling so his wrestling work is really good and he drills it into us drills it into us as well. He's Rob's wrestling coach as well. When you see Rob in there, he's um he's a hard person to take down because he's he knows the basic fundamentals to yeah. wrestling. And uh, what was your what was your background before getting into MMA? Like, did you did you go straight to MMA or did you dabble in boxing first or? Uh, no, I was a I was a rugby league player. I was <laughs> I was all, I was always yeah I was a rugby league player. I mean, you built like a brick all, shit house. I can't I can't see why you weren't. <laughs> yeah, but no, I was I was always, I've always wanted to do combat sports since I was a little kid, looking up to David Tour and that, growing up in the same neighbourhood as he was. And um, but I was just real shy. And then and then football went out the window. Yeah. And then um, I finally grew some nuts and. <laughs> went into a gym. Did you get in uh, like many fights in in rugby and stuff like that, or? Um, no, I wasn't. I was no, I wasn't. Uh, not really. I was always a quiet guy. Oh. I said quiet guy. Now, how does it feel coming down? Because your first uh, couple of fights were, I mean, your first ever fight was at middleweight, but then you went up to light heavyweight. Uh, what was the the reason for coming down? Because I mean, you're undefeated in in amateur and and pro. So what what was the thought in coming down from light heavyweight? Was, uh, from light heavy, because uh, the guys in light heavy are big, you know, and I'm not, I'm, I'm even small. I, I, I consider myself smaller in the middleweight division as well. Yeah, I mean, you, the, the, especially the, the height department. I mean, the photos in the weigh-in, you next to Josh, it actually, you actually looked quite small. Now, seeing you in person, I was like, that dude is a fire hydrant. But like, <laughs> but uh, and and the way that you slammed uh, his body down to the canvas, I was like, "There's some muscle there." But yeah, does does the reach factor sort of affect you at light heavyweight or, and even middleweight or? No, no, it doesn't affect me much in um light heavy. But I knew it was, it was time for me to come down a weight because I'm outsized in the light heavyweight as well when I'm when I fought at light heavyweight. But yeah. I'm not. 
I think middleweight's my um my weight. Oh, without a doubt, you're you're performing extremely well. And the weight cut's not too hard for you. No, it's easy. I walk I walk around like close to weight. Nice, nice. And um, one little question too. Uh, you took a little gap uh, between 2015 to 2017 with some of your fights. Uh, I've I've got here if I'm uh if I'm correct. Yeah. What was the what was the gap for? Oh, it was just family family duties call. Oh. And um, yeah, I had to man up and um provide. But now I've um, got a secure job and I can do both now. I like that because a lot of uh, even what you've just said today, like a lot of is 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 manning up and, and having having balls. Have you? Did you have a, a problem with that when you were younger? Did you shy away from a, a lot of situations? Because you seem quite proud about the ability to stand up against like adversity and things you've got to do now. Um, uh, what what do you mean? Sorry. Like it's sort of how you you kind of um uh, you're quite proud of your ability to stand up now and, and, and things you've got to do, like your job to provide for your family, to fight for your family, to just sort of have the balls to go from rugby to MMA. Was it something you struggled with as a kid? Were you kind of yeah, quite was, shy? Yeah, I was a really, really, really shy kid. I was like, I was, I was real quiet. I, I didn't really speak out. But um, as I grew through my teens and into an adult, I sort of thought, uh, I, I thought to myself, I always think like it's now, either now or never. And that's how I think, like, I think now I can't be shy for too long. Yeah, well, man, it's 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 definitely uh, paying off because it was it was pretty impressive. And I know MMA math doesn't really work, but what Josh Della did to Rapati was insanely impressive. And then to see what you did to Josh Della I just took it to another level. So where do you, I mean, where do you see yourself going? I know you're going to say take it one fight at a time. Everyone does, but uh, where do you see it panning out, especially for the rest of the year in your career? I just I just want to be able to fight um, the best in Australia. That's all I want before making before making anything big. I feel like as a fighter, like a fighter fighting out Australia, I feel like I got a duty to pay to fight the best in Australia before fighting anyone around the world. And uh, I think you you and uh, Mitch Martin are one of the main guys that keep trying to defend your your titles on Eternal. So. I think that's that's super vital, and and people are really starting to get behind you. Even in Perth, when you finished Josh Della, I literally heard a fucking pin drop. Like the whole the whole city, the whole uh, arena was just empty. Like was quiet, and uh, that's that's a compliment to you. <laughs> yeah, it's nothing new to me because it was the same same sort of noise in Brisbane as well. <laughs> we got to get you one in uh, New South Wales for you. Get you get the crowd yeah. behind you. If it was in New South Wales, no doubt there would be a massive crowd. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, Izzy, honestly, like, thank you so much for taking the call. Uh, I know you don't exactly like to, to say a whole lot. You let your fighting do the talking, which it, it bloody well does. But, yeah, thank you for the for the chat. You were super dominant, and I can't wait to watch your next fight. Uh, thanks a lot for the phone call. Not a problem. Is there any, any little shout-outs you want to give anyone just be, before we before we head out? Yeah, I just want to make a shout-out to my gym, everyone in my gym that's helped, helped me along the way, my, my, my boxing gym as well. Stand strong boxing and Gracie, um, Gracie Smith and Grange, and um, my coaches, um, Fabrice Ita and Alex Prates and Justin Fitzgerald, and my training partners, Jacob Malcoon and um, Robert Whitaker and David Francis, and my family. Awesome, yeah, awesome. thanks. Man. I knew you were going to get that in, going to get that family in. <laughs> well, man, uh, you enjoy your family and you enjoy your rest, and uh, I look to hopefully see you fighting in Eternal, hopefully, maybe even back in Perth in May. So. Have a good one, man. Enjoy the family and enjoy work. All right. Thank you, mate. Thanks, dude. Take it easy. Bye. Hello. Simo, how you doing? Is that you, Mitch? Yeah, it is. Yeah, good. Hey, uh, how, are you, how are you holding up after the weekend? Yeah, pretty good. I only... Uh... I think because there was four refs, because Carl was coming along good now, so... Yeah, he... Uh, is that his first event trickling over? Uh, no, he was on Hex. Oh, yep. A couple on Hex, and he's been doing a lot of the, um, uh, the sort of, the sparring day stuff yep. for Evolution. And so he's come, he's coming along nicely. Is that how you, uh, you transition, uh, sort of referees into refereeing? Do they have to start judging, or is there a... a... Correct. Oh, okay, cool. Correct. So you've got to do some shadow judging and shadow refereeing. Um, shadow judging, you sit next to a judge at fight shows, you've got to do some of them and uh, 
the uh, sparring days were ideal to cut your teeth at um, wrestling, mate. Yeah. Um, now you had you had two fights. You had the uh, Casey O'Neill fight, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Now, girls' fights. Yeah. Wanted wanted to dive straight into that. What is the actual uh, protocol in that sort of situation? Because uh, I believe uh, the knee blew out. There was something to do with a, a, a knee injury. Well, she's. I think she's torn her ACL, but exactly how and when it happens. I mean, she. She, I think she threw a kick and then stepped back to put it down, and it just collapsed under her. What is 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 there a, you know, there's obviously no injury timeouts or how does that how does that no, work? Not. So is no, that of course there's no injury timeouts. So I mean, I almost stopped it there and then, but the second um, the other girl got near her, she started throwing shots. Straight yeah, away. Is, so it, I thought, well, maybe she's just twisted it on the way down or or she's clicked and. And she's going to be okay to fight on, but uh, she fought for a while and she valiantly got up, back up to her feet, and then uh, it went again. And that's the so, thing. It's like, do you? At what point do you have to step in? Because obviously, fighters are going to uh, fight to the death, type thing. Well, what? Of course, mate. We're, I mean, I've been a warrior myself. You, nobody wants to quit in there. Nobody. Sometimes you got to protect fighters from themselves. She would have gallantly fought on, but no. I mean. She was handicapped and um, too restrictive, you know, to, um, to look after herself. So. Do you think, though, if, if doctors can come in and check cuts, do you think doctors should be able to come in and check stuff like that? thing is, in, in MMA, that you can't really bring them in to check them during the round. So it can only be during... But if there was like a, a, a deep cut that you were concerned about, you could bring the, the doctor in, couldn't you? No, you'd, le- you'd let it go to the... If you were really concerned, you've got to stop it, or you let it go to the break, mate. Bring him in at the break. Okay, so you, the last fight. so you can't actually kind of throw a time, throw a time out type thing and, yeah, and bring him in. It's very hard to do in MMA because it's, it's so fluent, you know? Yeah, yeah. We have, we have timeouts and counts and stuff in boxing and MMA. In... Um, Muay Thai, but not in a... Mm. Not do you, in do you think that's situation. something they should bring in, or are you happy with how it's rolling? No, I'm quite happy with how it's rolling. And um, I wanted to get your thoughts on, obviously, the, the main event, Josh Della versus Izzy Fittifuku, and uh, Fittikifu, sorry. Uh, what, uh, what was going through your mind with that stoppage? Like, what, what was the, the reason for the stoppage, just in, in your any, words? Just taking too many shots, mate. Yep. Is it is it just kind of... Round one, is it you kind of going, I, I'm in there, I can feel what's happening type thing? Is it where, What's running through your mind throughout that whole fight? Um, well, you're assessing the damage while you're there and, and how much he's fighting back, how much success he's having. He had very, very, very little success. Yep. Um, I've seen him dominate other fighters himself. Yes. Him when he's dominated fighters that way, but he was dominated from way to go, I thought. From uh, I, um, I heard a 20 second, somebody shout, 20 seconds to go in the first round, and I was adamant, I was very close to stopping in the first, because there yep. were a couple of nasty cuts, and the doctor was um, um denied about it a little bit, and sort of said, well, if it gets any worse, pull it up, because I don't want to see that open up as a flat anymore, one of the, one of the head, head cuts. Yep. Um, so it was very close to coming to an end, but we, we give the coach time to work on it. Yep. Do his magic. Um, and then in the second round, he got picked up again and slammed. Yeah. Although he got the guard, which gave him a little bit of respite and gave him a little position where he could start throwing some offense himself, he never got out from underneath. In the, in, I think it was seven and a half minutes the fight lasted. Is it, is it one of those things where you go... Maybe like uh, he's taken so much damage so far, and I didn't stop it. I'll I'll let it go. Like I really want to kind of get in in the mind of of an um, of a referee. Like at what point were you just like that's one too many shots? Are you looking at his eyes? Are you looking at his body? Are you looking at kind of how much time is left in the round? Like no more the deterioration, mate. He was he was still getting caught. He, yes, he was stifled some of them in the second round because he got the guard on, but. 
he copped a big elbow about a minute in. Yep. Shit, blood went everywhere, mate, and it's just time up. Sometimes each, each fight forever. Yeah. But you got to um, protect them from themselves sometimes. And how did how, did you talk to Josh after the fight or, or after you stopped it? Was what? How was he? Yeah, he was okay. Obviously, all warriors are disappointed they don't want to get stopped. Yeah. But he was, he was fine with me. I mean, there was a great photograph that yeah. Hit, Hitman took where I was actually saying to him, look, you're going to live to fight another day, mate. You know, it's not the end of the world for you, but I feel you've had enough. And yeah. that's that. I see, I see. Uh, now, if you hear, you know, uh, say me or, or whatever, saying like 10 seconds or 30 seconds left in the round, does that play a part in whether you kind of stop it or you let a guy keep keep fighting? If he's if he's able to, I mean, I did hear somebody say it was ten or twenty seconds to go in the first, and I thought, okay, he's 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 fighting back a bit. We'll see how he goes. I mean, if you've got to jump in, you've got to jump in, even if there's three seconds on the clock, it doesn't yep. matter. And you really want to give the 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 coach time to have a look at it, and and also get the the medical experts in to have a look at it. Yeah. If you can, so that's what we. That's what I did. That's more was my thought in the last ten, fifteen seconds of the first. Yep. Um, and the doctor wasn't. He was a bit concerned, but he, he said, "No, I'll leave it to you." He said, "If it gets any worse, then pull it up." Cool. We let Ben work on it, which he did. Mm. Um, and we'll see if the the boy can have any any joy in the next round. And it was the same story, mate. The kid was so strong. Yeah. Well, it's just, I, I, I like to get that, that insight. You know, people always ask the fighter or the winning fighter or losing fighter. I just really wanted to get the, the sort of thoughts on, on what goes through a referee's mind. And, and you are one of, if not the best uh, referee in WA, at least. Uh, so oh, thank you. it's good to get that sort of, uh, you've got the most experience, you, you know what's going through. And I think crowds, coaches, teammates need to know what's going through your mind when stopping a fight. You're not thinking about win and loss. You know, Absolutely you're not. you're thinking about safety or you're thinking and and people will think, you know, oh, you let the first 7 minutes go, why not leave a little bit longer or or why well, didn't you stop it earlier, that you know? Time, that time I thought enough was enough. And that's look, I, that's why I kind of wanted to give you sort of a little platform so people can can hear that that side and of then, it. And in the old money, you would have had 20 stitches in the old if you stitched them up the old, but they've got a new way of stitching where it's continuous. Oh, yeah. So, you know, if it had been the normal stitch and tie off, yeah, cut, there would have been 20. Jeez. And um, yeah. just uh, just leaving it before we uh, before we close out on that, I wanted to kind of get your thoughts, if you don't mind, uh, about the, the Jake Matthews UFC fight. Oh, yeah, that do was you, exciting. Yeah, do you mind, because um, you got a bit of stick from the from the Yanks about it, and you were talking to me at Eternal 31 yeah. about it, and I thought, you know what, why not better than, than get you on here to sort of give your side side of it? Yep, it's... Uh, well, a foul is a foul, and, the, and it was a foul, but whether you take a point off there and then is the discretion of the referee. Yep. Um. I didn't think the eye gouge, although it looked bad, there'd been a head clash just 10 or 15 seconds earlier. I think if I remember rightly, Matthews buzzed him with a big right hand. Yep. And then they sort of fell into each other. And the Chinese lad head buddy Matthews. It wasn't a deliberate one. It was just the way they, it was a clash. It was yep. as simple as that. And as he went for the guillotine and he... And he went to his back and put the guard on, I'm standing right over the top of him. I, can, I, I saw the head clash, and the, it was seven, eight stitches worth there and then in the eye. Yeah. So when the, the uh, Chinese lad brought his left hand over the top of his face, his right hand was already on the jaw, and his left hand was on the floor when I, when I looked at the cut, and then he brought his left hand over the top, and he started pushing on the face, try and get out the guillotine. Now, he was smothered in blood again, soaking wet with sweat, so it makes it very slippery, plus he's pushing down on the face. Yep. Now, I slapped him on the back of the hands twice, mind the eyes, because his English was very, very limited. Yep. 
So I slapped him on the back of the hands and let him know that I wasn't happy, with, you know, to be careful where he was putting his... Then he, he looked like, to me, he's, he's put the index finger and, the, and the, the next one to it in the eye, but he was pulling to one side. He's pulling back towards himself. Yep. So it, it looked like the, a lot of the pressure was on the nose. Now, in the first rounds, whether he grabbed Jake's glove or his fingers got caught in the gloves, I don't know, but given the benefit of the doubt, Jake turned to me immediately and protested. In the situation with the guillotine, he never made a sound. Yep. Not like, oh, ref, ow, fuck, you know, anything, nothing, not a sound, just was concentrating on going for the guillotine. Yep. So I let him go. Now, both fighters were fighting really hard. It was a really good flow. And do you... It's a foul, yes. So I told him off at the end of the second round. I said to him, um, I don't know if they picked it up, but anything serious and you're done, you're out of there. Anything minor and I'm going to take a point off. And he acknowledged that? Well, I, I spoke to his coach. I said, make him understand. Yep. He's got to, he's got to keep clean. But the, the whole fight was flowing. If you'd stop the fight... Take the points off. The, the doctor's probably going to come and look at the eye and the cut. You could lose the fight through the cut eye, and then you've got to go to the cut eye rule with a third of the fight being done. If he, the doctor doesn't stop the fight, he might turn around and say, yeah, it's really bad. What do you think, ref? You know, put the doubt in the fighter's mind. So both guys were flowing. Jake Matthews, to me, didn't want to stop fighting. Yep. Even when the, when the head popped out after the guillotine, which was... Yes, the, eye, the fingers were on the eyes. The whole hand was pushing the face. The body was wet with sweat. The body was covered in blood. Combination of all four things for him to get out of the guillotine. Jake didn't turn to me and go, ref, nothing. He just steamed, wanted to carry on. Now, did you speak to, have you spoken to Jake Matthews after the fight? Spoke to his father. Yep. His father what, gave me a call. What do you have to say? They were okay with it. Because the right guy won the fight in yeah. the end. I thought Jake Matthews, if I was scoring it myself, had won the fight. It was a very, very good competitive fight, although I thought he possibly won the first round 10-8. Yeah. Possibly with the guillotine, the, ten, uh, the rear naked at the tent, and, and the position he had and the control he had. Was, uh, was right hands as well. Was Perth rolling with the 10-8 uh, the rules, the new 10-8 rules? Yeah, yep. yeah. They're, they're there. they've been there for a long time. Yep. You know, they've just changed slightly how you how you can see them, but yep. they are there. I think two of the judges actually gave them a ten eight. Oh wow! One judge gave them a ten nine. And uh, did the did the UFC or the uh, referee coaches or anything say anything about it? Um, well, we had just, we have a we have a wind down meeting. You know, um, we had a chat about it. So. That's between us refs. <laughs> awesome. No, it's it's you know it's but, good. Uh, it's uh it's like I was I, saying I, at the start. Yeah, sorry. Continue. It was a competitive fight. I thought Matthews was winning the fight. I didn't feel I needed to interfere that much. It's, he's made a foul. I'll go and speak to him about it. Um, and let the flow carry on. Really, yep. you know, you can, you can over police fights easy. Yep. That, I mean, yes, if, if somebody had stopped the fight and said, stand up, take a point off, no worries. I mean, or you wouldn't disagree with it happening. I can't disagree with the way I um, let it flow neither. I mean, it's, it's the much of the muchness, you know. So you reckon there's a grey area, not a grey area, but it's not a, it's not a black and white uh, sort of... Refereeing's never black and white. Yeah. It's red and blue, <laughs> but it's never black and white, bro. Yeah, I like you know, I like that. You've so got, you've got, you know, I I don't ref for hometown boys or whatever. They they both got to get an even stab at the cherry, you know, the even an even playing field. Um, and you you ref it as red and blue. Yep. You can have your opinion of how it's the fight's going because you're judges as well, so you. Yeah, you've got it in your mind who you think's winning and how you think they're winning it. I thought Matthews was winning the fight. 
I thought it was a competitive fight, but I thought he was winning the fight. And I didn't think the foul... See, there was a lot of the Americans... I heard the... I watched the tape afterwards. There was a lot of blood. Yeah. And an open wound. But I'm not so sure they saw the head clash. Yeah, that's... I mean, you you told me at, at, at Eternal on the weekend, and I thought, well, I mean, there's a lot of people that might not know that, so... So I kind of wanted to... the head clash was there before any hands got involved. So if you look at the... The, the couple of things to me that was you take all the blood and the cut away, how much damage did the fingers do? The fact that Jake Matthews didn't scream or bark or cry at the referee, how much damage were they doing? So I think that's the the bit, the fact that Jake isn't protesting it, it, it is, I guess, the, the only fighter that, that can. No one else should have an opinion, I guess. If it's if if Jake Matthews is 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 cool with it, I guess it has to die with that, doesn't well, it? Op- opinions, of course, are like assholes. We've all got one, <laughs> but they don't count, do they? Yeah. It, it's um, the kid had a good fight. They both had a good fight. There was no malice or or afterwards about it. And you and you heard Jake Matthews. He didn't think too much of it. Cool. Yeah. Well, that's. That's good. Well, um, Simo, thank, thanks for the call. Uh, How thanks about for taking the, young, the call. Uh, the younger brother on the weekend, Jack. Jack, is it the red, big red? Yeah, something? big red, Jack Della with the uh, the sleeping KO. And you know, you s- you up, said it up, to up, me up. too. You know who was more impressive than Jack? Diogo. But Diogo was rest really well. I thought the the he came in and he stopped that shot, that second shot. Perfect. Oh. Great referee. Great referee. Absolutely uh, yeah. insane. Um, yeah, it's, right, Eternals looking good. WA yeah, MMA is looking good. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of quality fighters coming through. The young, um, I'm not sure of his surname, but he was on before. Brody Pano? Brody. Yeah. Very impressed with him. Yeah, he put on a, a, a pretty loose, loose fight against Daniel Fuller. It was looking slick. Yeah, there, there's. Um, some great fights on the card, and it was a busy crowd. Of, I was a bit worried at the beginning because a lot of people were at the rugby, but yeah, it soon filled up, and the atmosphere was fabulous again. Oh, it always is every single time. Yeah, yeah. So they do a good job. So be interesting to see. That. I think they're going to Adelaide next. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll be at that one. Are you are you going there? Right? Yeah. Well, that'll be good. And of course, they've been going well in Queensland, so it's awesome. Taking over. <laughs> Happy and. Uh, very happy to be involved. Yeah. Well, thanks, Simo. It's always a pleasure. I love chatting to you thanks, and Mitch. love your work. So, and you're, you're doing a great job too, mate. Thank you, sir. I'm enjoying it. <laughs> thank you so much. All right. See All you right. soon, bro. All right. Take it easy, brother. Bye, mate. Bye. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that rounds it out. Uh, I just got off the phone with uh, Simo, uh, Mark Simpson, the referee. He's basically the head referee. Of of WA, I don't know his official term, but he he does look after all the referees. He's at least the most experienced. Uh, I just wanted to get his thoughts on the Josh Della stoppage, uh, because obviously in the MMA clinic side, and as you've heard earlier, there's uh, thoughts opposing that stoppage, and then also the Ram where uh, taking on Casey O'Neill that that sort of the the knee buckle. So I really wanted to get his thoughts, and also obviously the Jake Matthews versus the Chinese fella. Uh, don't know his last name, uh, but that was the UFC uh, two 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 one. It was in Perth, the one in Perth. Uh, Simo was one of the Australian refs that got to do that one. So I mean that wraps it up, guys. Uh, we chatted to Jack Della, uh, who we spoke about earlier, getting the getting the knockout eternal welterweight champion spoke to Ben Vickers his coach and the coach of uh, the Ember May Clinic who uh, looked after seven of the ten uh, fights uh, we chatted to uh, Izzy Fitikefu finally got that right uh, middleweight champion he's just an absolute beast you've got to love him soft spoken but it's almost scary sometimes listening to a guy that's that soft spoken and so so much of a killer and then uh, that was Mark uh, Simo Simpson uh most experienced ref in WA and probably one of in Australia. So thank you guys for listening. Uh, I don't know if uh, we're keeping this under the Eternal MMA Uncensored. If Cam lets me put it up, then everybody thank Cam. Uh, if not, you're just listening to to me. My name is Richard Tinley. I'm the ring announcer for Eternal MMA, and I'm just all-round lovely fight fan. I'll see you guys in Adelaide for Eternal MMA 32. Uh, do head up eternalmma.com for tickets. 
Uh, find Mitchell Tinley on Facebook uh, and Engage Industries. Hook them up, okay? Peace, guys. Thank you for listening. Have a great uh, rest of the month. Thank you.